بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فخلف من بعدهم خلف ورث الكتاب يأخذون عرض هذا الأدنى ويقولون سيغفر لنا وإن يأتهم عرض مثله يأخذوه ألم يؤخذ عليهم ميثاق الكتاب ألا يقولوا على الله إلا الحق ودرسوا ما فيه والدار الآخرة خير للذين يتقون أفلا تعقلون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي in this beautiful ayah of Surah Al-A'raf, ayah number 169, Allah describes a nation that failed the expectations of their ancestors. In the Arabic language, when you say khalf, khalf, it means a generation that came after, that was stagnant, or was worse than the previous. When you say khalaf, with a fatha khalaf, then it actually means a successful generation. This ayah is about, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ Meaning a, 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 a loser generation took after them. Now we are, we call ourselves, a lot of youth call ourselves, the next generation. And the question is, are we khalf or are we khalaf? Are we the successful next generation or are we a failed next generation? Let's look at this ayah to put ourselves to the test. Warithul kitab. Number one, the loser generation came that inherited the book. So they, they didn't actually, they're lucky enough that they got the book in inheritance. In other words, they didn't go and become Muslim or convert to Islam or seek out the book. It was just passed down to them from the previous generation. And despite having inherited the book, يَأْخُذُونَ عَرَضَ هَذَا الْأَدْنَى They still hold on to the motives of this most inferior life. This inferior thing, this life right here, this is all that, that takes over their minds. That's all they think about is worldly things. All they think about is the next game, the next movie, the next toy, the next car, the next house, the next vacation. That's all they think about, the next meal, you know, the next outfit, the next shoes. This is it. This is all their life amounts to. You know? I traveled to some parts of the Muslim world recently and I saw, subhanAllah, I saw young people, I almost cried. Almost cried just walking down a, a mall. Like, they're so obsessed with the brands that they're wearing and the bag that they're carrying with a certain brand name on it. They like, they go out of their way to show you that they're carrying a brand name. Like, you're not a person, you're just a coat hanger for like, different brands. Not really a person anymore. This is يَأْخُذُونَ عَرَضَ هَذَا الْأَدْنَى This is a loser generation. وَيَقُولُونَ سَيُغْفَرُ لَنَا And on top of this totally materialistic worldview, they have the audacity to say, Oh, we're going to be forgiven. سَيُغْفَرُ لَنَا Oh, we're going to be covered. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're the saved generation. And you know why they say that? Because every time you say, Why would you be forgiven? What's so great about you? They cite the accomplishments of their past generation. وَإِن يَأْتِهِمْ عَرَضٌ مِثْلُهُ يَأْخُذُهُ أَلَمْ يُؤْخَذْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِثَاقُ الْكِتَابَ أَلَّا يَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْحَقِّ And by the way, if they were given another motive, some other thing to, to, to work towards, other than deen, they would just go run after it. The next new trend, they would just go after it. This is the criticism of a failed generation. They're very much into the trend. They're not into what is timeless, they're into what is trendy. You know, if something is going this way, it doesn't matter if it agrees with their principles of faith or not. It's just going to go for it, you know with no sense of what is right and what is wrong. A, a new movie comes out. Oh, it's just got a couple of filthy scenes. It's, you know, it's rated for language or whatever. But I mean, everybody's watching it. Come on, let's go watch it. You know? So you, you don't want to hold yourself, you, you want to draw the line for yourself anywhere. This is, if they were given some other motive, they would just go grab it. أَلَمْ يُؤْخَذْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِثَاقُ الْكِتَابِ were, Aren't they under contract? As I'll put it in simple terms. Aren't they under contract from the book? That they're not going to be speaking except the truth on behalf of Allah. In other words, young people, the next generation, were supposed to be the outspoken, the spokespeople for Allah's book. وَدَرَسُوا مَا فِيهِ And they, weren't they we supposed to be the people that studied what's in the book? So the young generation will be live up to the, the expectations of the previous and their prayers will be fulfilled when we become a generation that wants to learn revelation that wants to live revelation, that wants to share the message of it passionately with others. وَالدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ And the final home is better for people who really want to protect themselves. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ 
then why aren't you thinking about this? Then, then don't you think? Haven't you given this any thought? You and I have to think what kind of generation we are. Are we going to be the, the generation that lifts our ancestors on Judgment Day? Or are we going to be the ones that drop them? I want to put this in perspective for some of you. Many of us are not from like the Arab, or of Arab lineage. For those of us that are from Arab lineage, you know, your Islam comes maybe even from the Sahaba's times, and it's being passed down from then on. But those of us that come, for example, from Asia, those of us that come from Africa, those of us that come from Europe, other parts of the world, you can imagine two, three, four generations before, probably even sooner, our ancestors weren't Muslim. Somebody took Shahada. Somebody became a Muslim. And when they became a Muslim, they, they, when they heard the stories of the previous prophets, that prophets taught Islam, and then their you know, next generation got a little bit deteriorated, and then the next generation got a little more deteriorated, and eventually Islam was lost. So a next prophet had to come. When they hear those stories, those people cried. And they said, Ya Allah, we're going to have children. Our children are young right now. Ya Allah, please raise them on Islam. Give them the ability to say, La ilaha illallah. So they can carry this message. I have been gifted with Islam. I was living in shirk my whole life. You guided me to Islam. Please guide my children to Islam. And those children had children, and their children had children. And now we've been genera- Muslims for generations. And you know what's really sad? The first person way back who became Muslim in our ancestry, who left Buddhism or Hinduism or Christianity or whatever else they had, and they left that for Islam. If they could only look at what you and I are doing today, you know? Are we living up to that sacrifice and that prayer that they made? Or are, are we an embarrassment to their legacy? You know? Do we look more like our non-Muslim ancestors or we look more like our Muslim ancestors? Are we khalf or are we khalaf? May Allah Azza wa Jal make all of us khalaf and make us the pride of our ancestors so that when we see them on Judgment Day, I want to meet the person who took shahada in the ancestry of my family because I know our ancestry is from the Afghan area. So they were probably Buddhists way back in the day. And somebody took shahada, somebody became a Muslim. And I want to meet them and I want to say, I want to be able to say that we carried that la ilaha illallah from you. Allah Azza wa Jal made you a means. And so all the good that I do in my life and my children do, kept counting towards you. This is the, this is the joy of you, you know, being reunited with our previous generations on the Day of Judgment. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum everyone. If you benefited from these reminders, please support Quran Weekly by clicking the link below.